Hey everybody, Jim Bull back at you and I know this has been sporadic every couple days and we're back to the book study. Rick Warren, The Purpose Driven Life. What on earth am I here for? And um, I'm only getting to it every couple days. I've just been busy and it's a lot to, to throw out every day and I'd like to do it every day but you know how life is, right? What's your purpose? What are you doing? I'm trying to figure that out. Why am I doing what I'm doing instead of doing this, huh? Anyhow, it's between me and God, I guess. But uh, we're into chapter 14 today, When God Seems Distant. And this is actually the last chapter in the first purpose. If you remember back, uh, Rick Warren said there's five purposes for worshiping God. And the first one was you were planned for God's pleasure. And there's been several chapters on this. And this is chapter 14, the very last one, When God Seems Distant. Again, I'm not going to read through it. I'm going to hit on some stuff. And then the last couple paragraphs, I'm going to read because it's going to get you bam. Bam, bam. <laughs> I know I'm crazy, right? But it's real. It's the real stuff. It's the truth. I promise God I'm going to send the truth, the message. It's what I'm doing. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you agree, and I hope you check it out and see what it does for you. But the uh, scripture starting out in this chapter 14, when God seems distant, is from Isaiah chapter 8, verse 17. It says, The Lord has hidden himself from his people, but I trust him and place my hope in him. Okay, starts out, God is real no matter how you feel. It is easy to worship God when things are going great in your life, when he has provided food, friends, family, health, happy situations, but circumstances are not always pleasant. How do you worship God then? What do you do when God seems a million miles away? Okay, so big question there. The deepest level of worship is praising God in spite of pain, Thanking God during a trial, trusting Him when tempted, surrendering while suffering, and loving Him when He seems distant. Friendships are often tested. Rick's comparing this to friendships we have. Friendships are often tested by separation and silence. You are divided by physical distance or you are unable to talk. In your friendship with God, you don't always feel close to Him. Philip Yancey has wisely noted any relationship involves times of closeness and times of distance. And it's the same in a relationship with God. No matter how intimate, the pendulum will swing from one side to the other. That's when worship gets difficult. And it's true, right? How many times have you seen a friend from school or somebody you you know, you haven't seen in a while or talked to in a while? And it's just like old times, man. Hey, what's up? Same with God. He's always there. Don't forget that, okay? Uh, to mature your friendship, God will test it with periods of seeming separation. I highlighted that. Um, goes down here besides Jesus David probably had the closest King David probably had the closest friendship with God of anyone uh, David King David frequently complained complained of God's apparent absence King David frequently complained of God's apparent absence this camera is still not working right eh? but just bear with me Lord why are you standing aloof and far away why do you hide when I need you the most why have you forsaken me why do you remain so distant why do you ignore my cries for help? Why have you abandoned me? Okay. Of course, God really hadn't left David. David and he doesn't leave you. Of course, God really hadn't left David and he doesn't leave you. He has promised repeatedly, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So uh, I'm going to jump over here. If, if this happens to you, the truth is there's nothing wrong with you. It's normal. Um, every Christian goes through it at least once, usually several times. Uh, God admits that sometimes he hides his face from us. Uh, Job went through it. Uh, it says it's, it's painful and it's often disconcerting, but absolutely vital for the development of your faith. Uh, knowing this gave Job hope when he could not feel God's presence in his life. He said, I go east, I go west, I can't find you anywhere. Turn north to south, can't find him. He knows where I, but he knows where I am going. God knows where you are going. And when he has tested me like gold in a fire, he will pronounce me innocent. Okay? Uh, God, uh, often this feeling of abandonment or estrangement from God has nothing to do with sin. It is a test of faith, one we must face. Okay? The most common mistake Christians make in worship today is seeking an experience rather than seeking God. Uh, it goes on to say, when you're a baby Christian, just getting started, God will answer a lot of simple prayers so that he, you know he's with you. But as time goes on, that gets tougher and tougher and tougher. He's got a lot of people he's working with, folks. You know, always remember that. Um, God wants you to sense his presence, however. He's far more concerned that you trust him than that you feel him. 
He wants to see how, you know, if you believe when he's not around, right? You know, like that old friend I just talked about, you run into him and you don't doubt that they've ever been your friend just because you haven't spoke with them in years. We have families, we have kids, children, jobs, we move away. You still love that person. God still loves you, right? Okay. Um, how do you praise God when you don't understand what's happening in your life and God is silent? How do you stay connected in a crisis without communication? How do you keep your eyes on Jesus when they're full of tears? You do what Job did. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave me, and the Lord has taketh away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Okay, so even though Job couldn't sense him, everything was unraveling in his life, he still knew God was there and praised him for what he had gotten. Okay, uh, it says tell God exactly how you feel, don't hold back. Okay, um, focus on who God is, his unchanging nature. Remember that, that God is, he's like the solid rock, Jesus and God. They're always there, man. We can always count on, you know, that Bible gives us the, the scripture, it gives us the wisdom, it gives us the guidelines for life, basic instructions before leaving earth, B-I-B-L-E. That will never change. That's been tried and true and trusted for over 6,000 years, I think. Okay, since that Bible started to be written word, okay, till today. So know that that's always there no matter what's going on in your life, okay? Uh, I like this. So don't be troubled by trouble. Don't worry about it. God's got it, okay? He feeds the birds when they're hungry. They got nothing, man. You can't go get a job and have a home and, a, you know, whatever. Takes care of the animals, even the lowly snakes, Okay? So that cool video on YouTube, that snake down in there. Well, never mind. I get lost quick. Sorry. Um, when you feel abandoned by God, yet continue to trust him in spite of your feelings, you worship him in the deepest way. I'm going to read that again, and then I'm going to read the rest of this chapter because right in the heart, baby, this is the real deal. This is There's no more truth than what I'm about to read to you after this first sentence. When you feel abandoned by God, yet continue to trust him in spite of your feelings, you worship in the, in the deepest way. So no matter what's happened, tragedy, loss of work, job, hungry, can't pay the bills, um, your Aunt Clara, I'm sorry, God rest her soul. You know, I'm not making fun there. No matter what happens, okay, when you continue to trust in the Lord, it's the, the deepest worship you could have for him. So now I'm going to read, this I think is the most important thing uh, that this chapter talks about. Remember what God has already done for you. Okay? Amen? All right? If God never did anything else for you, he would still deserve your continual praise for the rest of your life because of what Jesus did for you on the cross. You and me. I'm not, I'm not pointing at you. You and me. Okay? Everybody. Okay? God's son died for you. This is the greatest reason for worship. He sent his only son. Okay? I'm going to read on here and shut up. Unfortunately, we forget the cruel details of the agonizing sacrifice God made on our behalf. Familiarity breeds complacency. Even before his crucifixion, the Son of God was stripped naked, beaten until almost unrecognizable, whipped, scorned, and mocked, crowned with thorns, and spit on contemptuously. Abused and ridiculed by, ridiculed by heartless men, he was treated worse than an animal. And you got to remember, the dude Pilate that did this to him knew he was it was wrong, but it's what the people wanted. Freaking animals. Excuse my freaking French, okay? Abused and ridiculed by heartless men, he was treated worse than an animal. Then nearly unconscious from blood loss, he was forced to drag a cumbersome cross up a hill. They nailed him to it and was left to die the slow, excruciating torture of death by crucifixion. While his lifeblood drained out, Heckler stood by and shouted insults, making fun of his pain and challenging his claim to be God. Sound like anything is going on in today's society? Sorry, I get fired up, people. Next, as Jesus, and it's not enough. Next, as Jesus took all mankind's sin and guilt on himself, God looked away from that ugly sight. So God abandoned him at that very moment. And Jesus cried out in total desperation, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus could have saved himself, but then he could have not saved you and me. Okay? 
Words cannot describe the darkness of that moment. Why did God allow and endure such ghastly evil mistreatment of his own son, right? Okay? We're worried about us, okay? Why? So, why? So you could be spared from eternity in hell. And so you could share in his glory forever. And we just take that for granted every day. I do it myself. I'm sorry. I'm not yelling at y'all. But, you know, think about that. For real? Okay? The Bible says Christ was without sin. Never did. Never sinned. We do it every day. But for our sake, God made him share our sin in order that in union with him, we might share the righteousness of God. Jesus gave up everything so you could have everything. He died so you could live forever. That alone is worthy of your continual thanks and praise. Never again should you wonder what you have to be thankful for. Now I guess you got to believe in all this hocus pocus mumbo jumbo God blah 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 blah. Okay, to to buy into this, right? But I'm telling you, it's real in my life, and it's real in millions of others' lives. The only there, there's been stories, fables, evolution, blah blah blah, bing boom, blast, bang bang, boom, whatever. Okay. Scientology, you, you know, you name it, it's out there, okay? But the only thing that's consistent and cannot be disproven in any way is the fact that God created this planet and everybody on it and that he has an eternal life in heaven waiting for you and me if we want it and heaven on earth if we want that too. So there's my tangent for today. Love you guys. Day 14, thinking about my purpose, the point to ponder. God is real no matter how I feel. The verse to remember, for God has said, I will never leave you, I will never abandon you. That's from Hebrews chapter 1, chapter 13, verse 5, I think. And the question to consider, how can I stay focused on God's presence, especially when he feels distant? So I got a little wild there at the end. I'm sorry, just the way I feel coming from my heart, okay? How can I stay focused on God's presence, especially when he feels distant? God is real no matter how I feel. And for God has said, I will never leave you and I will never abandon you. Love you guys. Check it out. Share it around. We'll be back soon. Later.